something's moving deep beneath the Pacific Northwest and it's not a single earthquake. It's not a volcanic eruption, but it's moving right underneath me. This is where I am. It's something quieter, stranger, and far more persistent. In the last few days, over 7,000 tremors have been detected along the Cascadia subduction zone. You might know what the Cascadia subduction zone is. This goes from Northern California alongside Oregon, Washington, and into British Columbia, BC. That's the Cascadia subduction zone, the Cascadia fault that is overdue to produce a magnitude nine plus earthquake. And eight to 15 minutes later, a tsunami up to at least a hundred feet. So this is what we're talking about. And along that, rupture we have these earthquakes so an enormous enormous fault line that scientists have long feared could unleash this devastating mega thrust earthquake they say it will ro rip open the pacific northwest destroy the pacific northwest everything west of i-5 will be destroyed i-5 is the major highway that also goes from california all through oregon washington and then into british columbia so these tremors they're not just dots that we see on seismographs there are signs of a vast slow motion event that is unfolding right now as I am speaking deep underground. And while we might not have felt a thing, the earth is rumbling there and has been rumbling. So the big question is now, what does that mean? What is that? Do we have to worry about the big one? Is it coming? So the numbers have shocked scientists this year and i tell you why so initial reports began tickling in on may 18th 2025 a spike in seismic noise a scatter of deep tremors and then came the headline and you guys also saw it i've seen it in the comments many of you sent me messages silky seven thousand earthquakes where you are so headline headline was 7,000 tremors along the Cascadia subduction zone this month alone, May 2025. The Pacific Northwest Seismic Network has confirmed an active tremor fa phase and researchers started tracking thousands of tiny low frequency seismic events like earthquakes. Too small to be felt, but too big in numbers to ignore. They weren't isolated. They were coordinated. They moved. They, like a ripple, a ripple of pressure beneath the continent. So where exactly is this happening? These tremors, they stretch along the Cascadia subduction zone that I have just explained. So and it's here that the Juan de Fuca plate is being shoved beneath the North American plate. That's why it's a subduction zone. And this process, like slow and silent subduction, that builds up the tension for the mega thrust earthquake. And the last time that this snapped, when now it's locked and it suddenly unlocked, that was on January 26th, 1700, a magnitude nine plus earthquake that devastated indigenous communities and has launched a tsunami across the Pacific, striking, of course, the coast here, but also Japan. And since then, silence. But silence doesn't mean inactivity. Unfortunately, it means the opposite. It means stress is building up. So it's a hidden process that is happening right now. It's an episodic tremor and slip. Let's step into the science a little bit to explain that. 
So what we're witnessing here is not an ordinary earthquake swarm that we've seen in Santorini recently, that we've seen in Campi Flegre, that we're seeing in Campi Flegre right now. If you're interested in the super volcano near Naples in Italy, check out the end screen and my playlists. No, right now we have what is going on. It's part of something known as episodic tremor and slip or ETS. Imagine that Cascadia Fault is a gigantic zipper and the upper portion is locked tight, grinding silently. But deeper down, where heat and pressure are more forgiving, it slips. It does. So not fast, not violently, but in slow motion pulses. So on the top it's locked, but underneath it slips, that builds up pressure. And when it slips, it trembles. And that's what we're feeling right now. So thousands of tiny tremors, sometimes over 10,000 can occur over a few weeks. And this is an event that happens on a regular basis here in the Pacific Northwest. And each one of these tremors, is a whisperer of movement as the earth exhales stored tension at depth of roughly 30 to 45 kilometers. And why does this matter? It matters a lot. Here's the unnerving part, guys. While ETS events are common, their timing, pattern, and movement could hold clues about the fault's readiness to rupture at shallower depth, where truly devastating earthquakes then could originate. So some scientists believe that stress transfer from ETS can bring locked segments of the fault closer to failure. But there's others, they argue that these events help release stress and might reduce the long-term risk. That would be great. The truth, we don't fully know. But when we see 7,000 tremors in only 19 days, of course, the scientists are paying attention and we are paying attention as well. And it's a common belief that when this slip slide event happens once every year, but not on a 12 month rhythm, it's usually every 13 months or something like this, Usually a lot of scientists say during that period, the risk for the big one to happen is increased. So what are the scientists saying right now, this year? Well, geophysicists at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network have confirmed this is one of the most active ETS phases in years. Am I surprised? No, I am not. You might have seen my video about the Pacific Ring of Fire and that it's very active with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions this year or currently. It has an increased activity. And since the West Coast here is on the Pacific Ring of Fire, it's not really surprising, but it's equally worrying. So yeah, we have seen tremor clusters like this before, but the pace and the density of this May 2025 event is different. And that's why it's catching eyes. The tremors are moving northward. I don't like that because what many scientists think that the Cascadia Fault will not break all at once. There's different segments. There's the southern segments, California, Southern Oregon. There's the middle segment around Portland, Seattle. And then there's the northern segment that is British Columbia, Canada. And they think that this will rupture first. I'm not happy about that, guys. I tell you that. So that movement of this ETS pattern to the north it matches normal ETS patterns, but the volume is remarkable right now. And in some areas, 
the tremor density is even higher than in past years. And while there have been no large quakes so far, so far, that's what the scientists are saying, it's the silence after the tremor ends that can be most dangerous. Because the locked portion of the fault remains immobile for now until it snaps. History repeats when it comes to these mega thrust earthquakes. But are we listening to history? That's the qu question I keep raising and raising with many dangerous volcanoes right now. Santorini, Campi Flegri, but also in other areas. Are we listening? In the late 1980s and in the early 1990s, that's when geologists be began to uncover eerie signs of past destruction here in the Pacific Northwest. Stands of dead trees in Neskowin, for example, and that beach that was washed free and then it was seen, the trees, but also in Washington, ghost forests. And they found sand from mega tsunamis washed inland. They found these layers. The ghost forests killed by saltwater floods, right? Tsunamis. Tsunami sun buried under soil. And also the oral histories of shaking and destruction passed down through indigenous communities. Then there was this mystery when a huge tsunami hit Japan in the 1700s records of waves with no known source. They were wondering where did this come from? They matched exactly with the Cascadia rupture, with the Cascadia mega thrust earthquake. The connection was and is undeniable. And yet even now in 2025, guys, the Cascadia subduction zone remains one of the most poorly instrumented mega thrust faults in the world. I see this here in Canada. They're basically relying on measurements that are located and being conducted in the US. I don't see that we have like a lot of tsunami warning buoys or systems here. So scientists are still learning how it breathes, how that fault breathes, slips and breaks. But I wish they wouldn't learn through an actual event, right? So should we be worried right now because of these 7,000 tremors? Well, overall, we should be worried about this Cascadia fault anyways. But let's be clear. Um, these earthquakes, that's not a prediction. Um, this is not a warning of any imminent catastrophe. But what we're seeing right now is hopefully, and it's likely part of a normal ETS cycle that happens on a regular basis, like every 13 to 16 months. Yeah, every 13 to 16 months, lots of tremors, and they often pass without an incident. But normal doesn't mean safe. That's the problem. And that's what many scientists are trying to explain to us. Each ETS event is like a stress test. And some day, one of these silent movements could nudge a critical section of the fault beyond its breaking point. So can we do anything? What can be done? Researchers are trying to deploy and they are deploying better instruments. AI and machine learning play a big, big key role um, to detect tremor patterns in real time. This new satellite system that I recently reported about that can track fault lines on a 24 hour basis, movements even only as wide as a hair. I have high hopes that in the future, prediction will become a reality. Of course, now public education campaigns are growing like shakeout drills. But still preparedness varies wildly across that large region. In Seattle, Portland and Vancouver, critical infrastructure still remains vulnerable and a lot. 
including like lots of 1960s high rises. Very, very few buildings are reinforced for a magnitude nine. And I see this here in Vancouver. They're putting up these towers. They're built like crap. It's really cheap material coming from China. They're, they're built to like big money, fast, fast, fast. And everything's breaking apart after only a few years. A tower that is 10 years old, it's already considered old. They have leaking, they have window problems. And uh, it's absolutely crazy. So will they withstand even a, a magnitude seven? I have my doubts because most of these towers, they have glass walls, right? So it looks great. These condos, you have a great view because the glass goes right to the bottom of the floor. And, and guys, I can tell you where I'm sitting right now, my view right now, I'm looking at a window that is cracked. You, I, I sat on the couch and I heard like a bang and I was wondering what it was. And I looked at this window it's double pane window. The inside window is cracked down to the floor. This is really scary when you're very high up in a high rise. So this is cracking without an earthquake and it's normal. I talked to the contractor that's supposed to replace this. It's normal. He says, oh, I've seen something worth. Sometimes they have big holes in them. I'm like, ah -ha, this is really great. So imagine these towers shaking and they always say they're meant to be survivable but not livable after an earthquake but how can i survive this if all the windows are gone and the towers are shaking we've seen the towers shake at the 7.7 .7 earthquake in myanmar but the towers that were shaking in bangkok they were not where the epicenter was they were further away from the epicenter but vancouver is on top of the epicenter and so is seattle portland doesn't have too many high rises but these old brick homes these old brick buildings, multi-story buildings that will collapse. And then these tsunami evacuation plans are patchy at best. Also not really great. And these small tremors, they don't trigger sirens or alarms, but they do ring the alarm bells to the scientific community a lot. The earth is speaking to us right now, not in a roar, not yet, in a whisper. Over 7,000 times this month alone in the month is just barely half, a little bit more than half. The Cascadia subduction zone is reminding us that it is alive, that it's moving, and that it's building up towards something. Right now, this is not the big one. But it's part of the same story. And someday this story will reach its climax, that's for sure. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. And until then, we have to watch, we have to listen, and we have to prepare and be aware. So thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video insightful, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, the links are in the description of this video. You can buy me coffees at mybuymeacoffee.com slash silkyside. That supports my farm animals. And thanks for the supers. Shout out to all my channel members. Thank you for supporting the channel with your membership. And I'm releasing a new video soon. Rudy has tried to predict something and he was actually right he did a great job so that video will probably be out today for my members only and uh, i hope to see you soon on this channel thanks for watching stay safe stay alert be prepared bye bye